Good morning, everyone. It's uh, August the uh, 20th, 2023. I just wanted to um, uh, have something to say. I've really got something to say about uh, the last video that uh, Julie put up there with her friend in need. Uh, and I think what it is, is we need to show compassion to these people who have mental health problems and are having struggling today, trying to get housing and recognizing the fact that our world has so many problems in it right now that we really need to work together. But I wanted to go on about how compassion needs to be put in this case. This woman obviously has her four, well, had her four cats. And the fourth one is apparently in the freezer uh, from what I understand. And I can certainly understand having animals myself, having a service dog, uh, all the different things that she does for me uh, starve off depression and uh, helps me with my physical and my mobility is issues as well. But these people, I find, who are homeless or who are very marginally uh, uh, low in our society and have an apartment like this woman are so attached to their animals and it's very understandable. Even those on the street are so attached to their animals, and I have uh, seen myself. It's not that when people are just out panhandling, I don't hand out money and I don't have, hand out food to them necessarily. But when I see a person who's on the street, for an example, that has an animal, and how much that animal means to it, and in most cases they will do everything they can, even starve themselves to see that the animal has food, so they're asking for food for the animals. Well, I've seen myself understanding very well how important these animals are. I have actually gone out and got a sometimes a bag, a small bag, or sometimes even a can of dog food, for an example, and have given them a can of dog food. And just they're so grateful for that can of dog food because this keeps them on the up and up. They're more level. They, they, all they think about is the dog or the cat. And it gives them a great deal of comfort. So I don't mind doing that. Because, like I said, having animals, I understand uh, the effect that this has. And anyone who loves animals and has animals can surely understand that as well. In this woman's case, I can see where she's coming from. She wants to cremate the cat. Doesn't know quite how to do it. But's not ready uh, to... Uh, she's still in a grieving process with the cat. And she just cannot quite give up the body of the cat. So I can certainly understand that. Um, although it's not the correct procedure. you know. And I can see that she's um, probably very careful uh, with her other three cats as well. But probably doesn't know how to clean the litter box properly and do what she needs to do. And from what Julie says too, she loves to take well her cats out for a walk. So she's got one of those pet strollers where you put your little pets in the stroller and take them out. So she's got very, very emotionally and mentally attached to these animals. So coming in there and ripping out or just taking the body out and, and not letting her have a chance to grieve or maybe she, what she really needs is a grieving counselor, even though it's an animal, just to get her over that hump. You know, and even taking all the other cats is not necessarily the, the best way to do it. She really needs someone to come in to show her how to do things properly if she's capable of it. So you really have to understand that people like this are human beings and they have feelings, they have emotions just like the rest of us. So you have to kind of pussyfoot, if you want to put it that way, on how you do things in a gentle and, and careful way to help these people. So and I know Julie is doing her best. It's her, one of her friends from school. She's um, gone downhill in certain ways too and um, I can understand Julie's frustration and her being so upset so it was quite obvious again in the, in the video just how, how much Julie was upset because down deep Julie is a really caring and, and kind-hearted person and but this is one of the things that I, I, I realize about Julie and so I gently try to explain things to her as well and that's come a long way rather than yelling and screaming at her and telling her how terrible she is that she's supposedly threatening people because uh, 
that this comes across, unfortunately, because she does have a loud voice. But this has been a defense mechanism that she has for 20 years that she's built up. When you have people fighting amongst themselves, you almost have to shout over somebody else to try and bring them down to some sort of reality. And especially when they're on drugs, how do you get through to them? Um, and it's very difficult on Julie. But I didn't want to have a too long a video today. But I say we really need to have compassion for this poor woman who has a cat in the freezer. Um, I wish we had vets. I don't know if we have vets that can compassionately help with this and come in. And I know one of the things is it's very expensive, certainly, to create an animal. I know when I lost my dog there and, um, and I had to put him down before I had Heidi, and that was in um, December of just before Christmas of 2019, you know, it was very expensive uh, to put it down. It was over $700. And I, I certainly didn't have the money, so I had to sort of give away the uh, body, in a sense, and just pay whatever I could, because the vet bill, as it was, was over $700 there. And the week before I had to put him down, the reason I had to put him down was he was a Shepherd Rottweiler mix. Um, he was uh, 12 years old. He uh, had All of a sudden, his nose was starting to bleed and bleed, and he'd shake his... Uh, face and of course his nose and the blood would be blood splatter would be all over my apartment so I took him in the vet said it looks like it's probably a, a cancerous tumor in the back of his nose and I had that choice and it was compassion the vet showed me compassion and told me the the truth right up straight that well you know uh we've got the bleeding stopped today you can take him home today and the bill was well over seven hundred dollars as well for that particular visit but it, it, he was straight up and it said right, right to me that, well, you might have him for a week, two weeks. You might have him for a couple of months. You might maybe have him for six months. But he's going to have to be put down. So, But I was very grateful. So I took him home. I had him for a week. And again, it started up. And I knew I had to put him down. But during that one week, I had, I at least, because I had some money to, to do this, I was able to have that week that I was able to say goodbye to him, and I spoiled him rotten, and I just loved him to pieces. I, I didn't dare go out of the apartment because I didn't want him to bleed to death on me either in the apartment. But I just spoiled him, I hugged him, but I, at least I had the chance to grieve and say goodbye to him. And when you have a person like what's going on with in Julie's case here, in this, this girl's case, it was probably, the cat probably died of natural causes, but in a case of a sudden death, and she doesn't know how to grieve properly. So I think we need grief counselors as well would help some of these people just to help them talk about it and get it out. So please have compassion for these people because don't think I don't. I do have a lot of compassion for them. And there's better ways that we can do and things that we can do to help people in terrible situations. And we really need to put our heads together and do it in a loving, compassionate way compassionate human way. So this is what I have to say today and everyone take care and have a nice day and bye bye.